Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game that was played in 1929 at the Kazan City Championship Junior section on the white end, Samsonov. And he's playing against the 16-year-old Rashid Nezmetinov. 15-move game. How did this one end so fast? Well, you got a sharp opening. Vienna Gambit sharpens further with d5. This early tension is resolved somewhat with f takes e, knight takes e, and on move 5 we have knight f3. If white exchanges knights, what would be your assessment of this position? If you'd like to go ahead pause the video, who would you prefer to be and why? Maybe give it 30 seconds? Okay, the computer prefers black here, white to move, but prefers black. Reading is around minus 0.5 or 0.6, but forget about the numbers for a second. What is it about this position that leans more towards black? There are a couple things that stick out to me. One are the bishops for black. Both doors are already opened. White cannot say the same. And two, note the pawns and the squares they're controlling. This guy, white's e5 pawn is controlling f6, and black's pawn is controlling f3. Why am I drawing special attention to f3 and f6? Well, what pieces have been exchanged so far? Black's king knight and white's queen knight. e pawns bother king knights. This guy, in other words, no longer has his favorite square. Black does not experience this issue. Okay. In this game, it's simply knight f3. Black continues to develop, increases the pressure on c3, freezes this pawn, can't move straight away. White wants to get rid of this guy. Queen e2. From here, bishop takes knight. Black wants to maintain this guy. Black also wants to move back, wants to address this threat to chop away on e4 and get the move back. If you're taking uh, on c3 with the knight, exchanging knights, white gets to recapture and you have to react to this threat. Bishop takes knight in this game. Black gets to continue to develop. Bishop g4. This is where white starts to go wrong. This point here is now weakened because of this last move, and white goes in for a pawn grab. What's considered a better idea is to continue to develop with bishop a3, stopping kingside castles, and also with an eye on queenside castles. Now, when I saw this in preparing for this video, this idea to go for queenside castles with no b pawn around, I was a little like, do I want to go in that direction? Is it really safe? If you have a similar feeling, I, I get that. Do know that you have another option a little bit earlier or further back right here. Instead of taking with the B pawn, you could always take with the D pawn and go bishop f4, queenside castles. In any case, in our game, instead of bishop a3, we have queen b5 check, c6. Queen takes b7, bishop takes knight. So white is going all in for this material. And now the white king is feeling some pressure here. The key kingside defender, the knight, is no longer around. It's no longer controlling the h4 square. So the black queen has an eye on that point. In this game, queen takes rook is played. Considered best is to chop the bishop, and we even see it one move later. This idea to get rid of the bishop is considered best. Why did white maybe not want to take the bishop? It's because of this queen h4 move. What are your options now? What would be white's options at this point? Well, if you step up to e2, there's only two options. If you step up to e2, that's going to turn out pretty bad. After check, king here, that would be mate. And after king here, we could take this pawn with check. 
and then take a time out to castle. This rook will not be going anywhere. It will soon be won. Try to save it. There's queen f2 with the fork. So that's probably a line that scares white. Um, however, considered best is king here allowing this fork. And in this position, it's actually close to an evenish evaluation. Black now has to come back to defend against this check, has to block the check. If you're stepping up, there's going to be mate for white. This position, even though black is up a rook, it's only a hair better for black. This knight is going to be one. White has an extra pawn. White has the bishop pair. In any case, this is considered best to take the bishop and enter that line there, that imbalanced position. But in this game, it's queen takes rook. What do you play here? Considered best is to castle, make sure the king is nice and cozy, make sure the rook is around to defend the knight, and that way the queen is ready to go all in. In this game, though, it is bishop takes g2, eliminating that two-point pawn, eliminating this defensive move g3. So if black tries queen h4 right now, g3 would hit, and black would have no better than to simply fall back here to defend against queen takes knight. In a different situation with the black king tucked away, there's this idea to take on g3 and say, ha, huh, you're in a pin. Not here, though. The timing is just not right. So this is considered best. Second best is the move played in the game. Bishop takes g2. And from here... We have a terrible <laughs> move, as it turns out, played by white. What, was, what would happen if bishop takes bishop is played in this position? Queen h4 check. King here. And the suggestion is to flick in this check, pull the king back to the center, and then take a timeout to castle. And even though black is down a full rook, how valuable are these two pieces? They have to be worth more than 12. This queen is stuck in the corner. We're ready to get some material back. Checks, maybe a fork. One thing I questioned in preparing for this video is why it was important with this specific line to first insert queen g4 check before castles. The reason why that's important is because if you castle first, White could play bishop a3, not only attacking the rook, but giving this king an escape route towards the queen side. If you try to check in this position, he's hanging a right, and you're not getting at this king. Queen takes bishop, rook d1 defends everything, white would be winning. So, a nice little additional check to first flick in, ensuring this king stays stuck in the center. Castling privilege is long gone. You're stuck in the center. You will not run towards the queen side. All right. In this game, bishop e2 is played. Can you spot black's next move? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. This is a checkmate in five. It ends in a flashy way. <laughs> a favorite of many coming up. Queen h4 check. These are all only moves here for white. You gotta go to e, gotta go to d1. Knight f2 check. King back. Double check. King back. Queen sacrifice. And normally, the smothered mate happens with the white king or a king in the corner, but not here. Knight f2. And <laughs> that's the ball game. So a 15 mover. White got too greedy there. Look at the final position. Smothered mate for white. The queen watches from the corner. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.